Welcome to The Gourmet Farmer. I'm your host, Jason Persall. You may be wondering, what's Gourmet Farmer and what's Gourmet Farmer all about? It's really about connecting the value chain from the gourmet farmer to the gourmet chef to you, the gourmet consumer. And we really want to put the emphasis on the farmer and how he produces this great product and food that we consume in this country. Our first episode is on edamame. I produce edamame. You may be wondering, what is edamame and what is edamame all about? I couldn't even pronounce edamame when I was starting out. I couldn't even spell it. My mom still doesn't know how to spell it or pronounce it. Edamame, edamumu. Anyways, come with me. I'll show you all about edamame. Okay, so I'll let you in on something with edamame. It's actually just fresh soybeans picked fresh. We've known soybeans for years and the foods that we consume every day, like soybean oil or soy sauce, teriyaki sauce, even tofu. But edamame is soybeans picked fresh. It's no longer a grain crop, it's actually a vegetable crop. So, and it's only a terminology that Japanese assign to uh, soybeans to identify it as fresh vegetable, edamame. Let's take a look at this little bean. You can see these bean plants are loaded with pods. So you can eat these beans right out of the pod, fresh. And that's the way I usually eat them when I'm scouting the fields. The th interesting thing about edamame is that you really want to harvest these when they're at their peak sugar levels. And a technical term is the R7 stage of a soybean. It means nothing to you, but means a lot to us farmers. But the bean is at its highest sugar, and that's when it's going to taste the best. So in order to find that out, really, there's no other scientific way than to eat them up, and you'll know the best way. So you know what? Let's go kick these up a notch, go visit with my friend Chef Tracy Winkworth of the Belworth House in Waterford, and uh, we'll see what she has in store for us. So here we are, cooking in the field. Uh, you may wonder, who cooks in the field? We do, because we're the gourmet farmer. And this is my great friend, Tracy Winkworth of the Belworth House in Waterford. And she's gonna demonstrate to us how we can do some great cooking in the field using edamame, and how we can incorporate edamame in our diet every day. So Tracy, what can we do with edamame today? First things first, Jay, the word, edamame. Can that not I be know. the most difficult word to say? Um, and we've had everything from edamame, mamamis, edamame. Uh, it's just insane about I know. how to actually say the word. <laughs> we struggled with that internally in the office, and my mom still last night still cannot pronounce edamame properly. <laughs> so I hear ya. I hear ya. So this great green vegetable, edamame, um, is very exciting for us in the kitchen to be working with it. Um, we knew it was a big thing when Faith Hill was munching on it at uh, the Country Music Awards, and we're like, we got to get into this. We always like to be on that cutting And we edge. all like Faith Hill. We all love Faith Hill. I do. And she's country. <laughs> and we're in the country. Um, so uh, it's always exciting and it's always us um, as a restaurant are looking for something new and exciting to bring to the table and to give our locals uh, a new ingredient to be talking about. Okay, so back to our edamates. We got it all ready in the bowl. They've been rinsed. And now what we're going to do is just add a little bit of salt on the top. When you do rinse your edamates, the salt will adhere to it. Um, and this is what's important with the edamates is they are actually salted. And quite frankly, you could just eat the edamates straight up like that. We don't need anything else. Today we're going to just kick it up just a little bit because I like a little bit of spice. And I also like to support any of our local harvest ingredients that are within season and that being my onions from my garden and um, some fresh garlic from down the road and um, we're gonna add a little bit of ginger a little bit of bring that global into our regionally wired dish here so these will take about um, five minutes or so to blanch. Um, what you're doing is you can just actually pull out a pod once you get close to it and you give it a feel and just make sure that it's slightly softened. Is that how you do it? At yeah, home? like I even I notice that the pod starts to split open. Split open a bit. Now in the restaurant we don't want to have it completely split open because no. that's the fun part about eating the edamani is actually getting in there with your fingers and um, fishing them out. Fishing them out makes it fun and uh, we always like you to have to work a little bit. 
There's a real talent to it, especially if you're sitting at a bar and you want to be cool and all that stuff in front of chicks. And um, it's great with the, beer too. Absolutely. You take the pot and with one hand, it's kind of like rolling a smoke and lighting it all with one hand, but I guess taking a... It's taking the Charles a, Bronson of the Mr. Right, Bean That's right, taking world. the pot, <laughs> splitting it open and flipping those beans with one thumb. Nothing like cooking in the field. Oh. It's being one with nature and like so much of our day that we spend is inside so if you can actually get out, enjoy the fresh air, get some sun and nothing can inspire you more than actually cooking right beside what, using what we're cooking with Absolutely. right beside us. So what I'm going to do is I got my nice uh, heavy duty wok. Why the wok is the shape it is, is for even heat distribution and a constant heat distribution. If you have a pan like this and we add our ingredients, we lose all of our heat. But as the shape of the wok, the heat will come up the sides too. This way when you're stir frying, it's a constant heat and we actually use less oil. So, which is another great and she thing. She speaks of that as a good thing. Yes, I'm not always into the, like, I love my butter. <laughs> so, I do love I'm my just, butter. I'm just teasing. That's all good. So, what we're going to add is a little bit of the cold press canola oil. And, Jason, just down there, I got a little bit of a sesame seed oil. Now, why I'm only going to just add a little drop of sesame oil into it because it's very, very fragrant. So a little does go a long way. So I'm just going to add just a tiny dot. Now, I'm going to add some finely diced white onions out of the garden and the spoon. I love having an assistant right beside me, spoon. A little bit of garlic. I'm telling the raft of the. What do they call that? A short line cook? Yes. <laughs> I should have had the hat. You're my sous chef today. And what else I'm going to add into here is ginger. Ginger, great for digestive, uh, great flavoring, um, and just a really unique vegetable. And how you peel it is I just always just use a spoon. And as you can see, I'm just recycling back into the field. It gets around all those nubbies, and I'm going to use my friendly little rasp here. How did I know that she needed that? Yeah. You catch on quick. A little in there. And we're going to add some heat with some chilies. I like the heat. Some salt. Some cracked black pepper. And now we're going to put our edamones. Can you smell that, Jay? Oh, I do. Mm. And on the side, just for some dipping and some extra flavor, we're going to serve your soy sauce. Excellent. This is a nice, uh, very fragrant soy sauce. A lot of chefs, I don't know what you would call it, like a, um, I call it more of a medium darkness, but uh, a lot of chefs call it a, a low, me low to medium darkness. darkness. Yep. So I don't know what that really means, but... Uh, what it means goodness. Mean? Oh, does it? Okay. That's goodness. <laughs> oh, it's all in a grading system, just like how we grade our maple syrup, too. Okay, so... So the, the darker it is, yeah. the more pungent in flavor it's going to be. Right. Okay, so our this is how fast this is. It's been sautéed off. It smells absolutely fantastic. We've it got does. the flavors of the the smells of garlic and ginger and yeah. uh, onion. Uh, great, as you were saying earlier, this is great bar food. This is great snack food. Um, and even getting the kids into eating the edamames, it makes for uh, for a nice healthy snack without them actually knowing absolutely. it's healthy. Our our kids. Um, enjoy eating vegetables but edamame is one of the vegetables that they enjoy eating the most and I think it's just because it has that real unique sweet taste to it and uh, doesn't have that soybean flavor to it it has a very unique uh, very fresh taste to it well I will give you a little bit of a tip on how to eat and this is I only learned by experience my first time having edamame was years and years ago and no one explained the fact of how you actually eat it <laughs> And I'm like munching away on the whole pot and everything thinking, this isn't right. Like this is very fibrous. <laughs> and so we actually set the dish back saying, um, something wrong. there's something wrong with this dish. And he and our waiter at the time, this is years ago, um, said, well, you actually have to pull the pot, the, the beans out of the pot. <laughs> and to be fair, I didn't even want to mention that I was a chef because I felt <laughs> so dumb. But um, Jay, if you want to just dig in. Absolutely. And, um, 
How should I just peel them out here? And, peel them uh, out. Or you can just, um, what he also said too, is you can just suck it right, that you can use the pods and suck it right through your oh, teeth. Oh, these are great, Trace. Just like how you would eat an artichoke too, like a fresh artichoke. So yeah, absolutely. Let's try it up. Dip it in a little bit of soy sauce. So you're getting the flavor on the outside. Mmm. Mmm, that is good. And at the same time, you're sucking all the sauce and goodness off the outside of the pod. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot, Trace. This has been really good. I love eating this. This is uh, so flavorful and tasteful, so easy to make and quick. Uh, you can visit our Facebook page. We're going to post up the recipe. Uh, you can see uh, the recipe uh, on the screen. and. Uh, you can go and eat at Tracy's uh, restaurant, the Bellworth House, in Waterford, Ontario. It's a great restaurant, great setting, and uh, Tracy would be more than happy to cook you up some fresh edamame when it's in season. Um, so please, stay tuned.